Tory leadership frontrunner Kemi Badenoch has appeared on Christopher Hope's GB News podcast and laid out her worldview. She described herself as very right wing and was asked if her kids shared her views. I think my kids are pretty uh, right wing. I have a I have a four year old who thinks um, being vegetarian is a very bad thing. Um, so. <laughs> what do you f- you feed it red? What do you feed him? Is it him or her? Uh, uh, red red meat. She loves bacon sausages. Right. So I asked her once. I said, "Tell." I had another friend over. Tell tell them what what your favorite food is. And she said, "Ribs, bacon, <laughs> sausages." Black pudding, <laughs> lamb chops, and it was just, it was actually hysterical listening, uh, l- listening to you. Right, so the, there's a difference between her really liking meat and thinking vegetarianism is a very bad thing. You know, as a four year old, if you're aged four and you're already saying, like, stupid vegetarians, why are they so moral? You know, as a, as a, you know I, don't, I don't want to disparage Kemi Bade, not as four year old. I'm sure they're lovely. I'm not in the business of, I'm not in the business of criticizing the political views of four year olds. Um, but, Four, four year olds should four year olds have political views. If she just likes ribs, fine, whatever. If she's already got a bugbear against all vegetarians, I would, I would, I have some questions about the parenting there. I think also that is she's supposed to really like animals, right? So, uh, you idiots! Why won't you eat all the pigs like me? Seems a little bit strange. Again, not to disparage the child, but I'm not sure um, that story from Kemi Badenoch sort of paints her, her sort of familial environment in a fantastic light. Um, Of course, that explanation raised more questions than it answered. Um, Most of the rest of the interview was as you'd expect. She railed against wokeness, um, vowed to crack down on immigration, criticised environmentalism, um, like mother, like daughter, and denied that Michael Gove was pulling the strings behind the scenes of her campaign. Um, There was one more interesting moment, though, when she discussed her teenage job at McDonald's. You worked in McDonald's. I mean, that, yes, that'd I be did. the first PM to ever worked in McDonald's, I think. I can't believe Rishi Sunak worked in McDonald's. Um, well, what has that, that taught you about? Uh, it, well, it, well, it was the first time that I pr- interacted properly with people who didn't come from the sort of background that I came from. You know, I grew up in a middle class uh, family, but I became working class when I was 16 working in McDonald's. <laughs> That's a funny, funny idea. You're, you're middle class. You go work in McDonald's for a little bit when you're 16 and then suddenly you're working class. I suppose she's saying, you know, she can relate to the working class because she worked in McDonald's. Fair enough. I'm not really sure that sort of played out in in, in her her politics. Um, you could also argue that any idea of classes related to work and income is still better than Starmer, who sees it as a lifelong status based on how much money your parents had in 1973. Um, Helena, uh, Kemi Badenoch is still the favourite to be Tory leader. Um, obviously, she's trying to get herself out there. I suppose at the moment, she's trying to sort of appeal to Tory party voters who are probably impressed, you know, if you've raised a four-year-old that already hates vegetarians. But um, w- what do you make of her campaign so far? Oh, my God. I mean, if you're a Labour Party bigwig looking at the Conservative leadership contest and Kemi coming out as the front runner, you must be laughing your way down to the bank, even whilst they're capitulating. Suddenly, the Conservative Party looking even more unserious by comparison. Now, talk about those kind of working class conversation, the, the statement that she made there. As you say, it's definitely far closer to an actual discussion of class than Keir Starmer ever gets, where his definition was just people who want to get by. And I'm just like, okay, that that's meaningless. At least she understands that it's about your relationship to production. But unfortunately, you know, it's actually about how you are forced to engage in your relationship to production. There's a difference between somebody who has to survive by working at McDonald's and has to sell their labour power for a wage every day, and somebody who's getting it as a Saturday job in between their time being paid to go to private school by your rich parents, right? Like, there's a big difference between that. And if you want to try and say that that change you'd be working class because you spent five minutes around people who actually came from poor backgrounds, like, put the fries in the bag, little sis, at the end of the day. But with regard to the other statements that she's made, it's very clear to me that she's just another kind of brain rotted, like culture warrior who doesn't have a a serious campaign to actually talk about the real issues that cost the Conservative Party the election. At the point at which her definition of, well, okay, well, really, my daughter must be right wing because she eats meat. I'm sorry, like the differentiation between different sides of the political spectrum is not based around your consumption of different food products at the end of the day. And banging on, maybe well, immigration is going to be a big issue, but banging on about kind of climate policy and environmentalism, when our country is incredibly, incredibly pro 
uh, pro-climate policy. John Bond Murdoch from the Financial Times got some really good data on this, showing that we're, even our conservatives are far more green in terms of their policy preferences than most Democrats in America, basically every party in France and every party other than the Greens in Germany. And they're our right-wing party. This isn't an electorally successful idea. And the big reason that the Tories lost the election was because of the cost of living. It was the state of the NHS. It was their failure and managing the economy. And when I watched her interview with The Telegraph on the Daily Tea, she was saying things like, oh, it's all about our frustrations with the civil service and trying to deal with critical race theory and and being talked about these different cultural issues. And then she touched on well, her favourite politician being Thatcher. Well, it was Thatcherism. It was adherence to neoliberal doctrine that screwed you over at the last election because the NHS collapsed and wages didn't rise with when inflation was very, very high. So if you think you have your finger on the pulse to turn the fortunes of the Conservative Party around, Kemi, you're going to be sorely mistaken in five years' time when either the Labour Party get the rack together and either grow the economy or Nigel Farage talks in real terms about the public actual concerns, not in a way that will actually solve them, but at least looking sincere and like he cares, rather than being somebody who's busy talking about who she's beefing with on Twitter.